Hello, my name is Mark Mateus. I am a Cisco Technical Solution Architect on the Campus Automation and Insights team. And today I will be talking about how you could use Cisco DNA Center and Cisco Secure Network Analytics to automate malware detection and mitigation. This demonstration will use three components, Cisco DNA Center, Cisco Identity Service Engine, and Cisco Secure Network Analytics. DNA Center will be used to automate the configuration of ETA enhanced NetFlow parameters on our network devices. Now that SNA is receiving that encrypted traffic analytics data uh, through its flow collectors, SNA will then detect malware and then use mitigation capabilities by applying different adaptive network control policies to an endpoint. Once that ANC policy has been applied, ICE will then instruct network devices to enforce quarantine policies using the change of authorization process. In order to find malicious activity in encrypted traffic analytics, we'll need our network devices to send enhanced NetFlow data that we call ETA to our SNA NetFlow collectors. Once the flow collectors receive this data, it will then use machine learning to go and look at the encrypted traffic patterns and signatures and then detect if it is actually legitimate traffic or actually malware traffic that is actually hidden inside that encrypted traffic. By using DNA Center, we can automate the process of configuring our switches for that flexible net flow or encrypted traffic analytics settings. DNA Center will be able to determine which level of capabilities each switch has based on its product type and version of a code that is loaded, and then also know which flow collectors are, are available at different sites, and then apply the correct configuration to each one of the switches automatically for you. Once SNA has received data, it will then start building comprehensive host information profiles for the, every single device on your network and we will be able to see observed communication patterns. We can actually see historical alarming behavior, and we also have an aggregated view uh, of host information. From this screen, we actually could even change a, an ICE a network policy uh, to any of the five choices here, which is quarantine, shutdown port, bounce port, reauthenticate, or none. Uh, this can either be done manually from this screen, or it can be done automatically with an automated response and alert uh, configuration. This is done in SNA, and SNA can say if it determines or sees a one of these malicious behaviors, there is a response capability of doing using an ICE ANC policy. ANC is adaptive network control and has a policy that you build inside of ICE, but using the PX grid control channel, SNA can actually see those type of policies and then apply those policies automatically for us. All right, time for a demo. In DNA Center, we will go to System Settings and then scroll down to Stealth Watch. Here's where we'll be able to place in the IP address or the fully qualified domain name of a Stealth Watch Management Console or SNA Console. Once we type in that information, it will ask us to verify the certificate for the device and approve it. Then we'll take a, we'll need to enter a username and password for read-only access so that we can do API calls to the Stealth Watch Management Console. And from this, we'll be able to find out which flow collectors are available on the network deployment. Then we'll go into our deploy and network settings, and then we'll be able to add uh, our Stealth Watch flow destinations. And then here we can have a common set of uh, rules for which flow collector to pick at a site level. We can do this at the global settings or if you have multiple flow collectors and you can you could then go down to an individual location and specify a particular flow collector for each one of those sites. As you can see here we are inheriting the global setting but we can go and change into a unique flow collector at any site or building or layer that you would like. Once we have that configured, we can then go into provision and stealth watch security analytics. DNA Center has now analyzed all of our network switches that we have available in the inventory. We have broken it down into sites and we can tell you what is the capability of each one of these switches and are they ready 
to be deployed for encrypted traffic analytics reporting. Now, based on the type of switch and the version of code that's available, we'll have different capabilities available. Some switches will be able to do ETA, lower devices, uh, like older devices that can't do encrypted traffic analytics, they'll be configured for flexible NetFlow. All we do is say we are ready to do that, hit go, and then our switches will then start being configured by DNA Center. It only takes a few minutes, and then we can go back and see that now these switches are, have then been enabled. Uh, they are configured, enabled, and what type of telemetry uh, capabilities is being sent for them. It's going to be flexible net flow or encrypted traffic analytics. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's go into the SNA console and take a look at a particular device. Uh, as you can see, SNA has now been receiving ETA traffic from our network switches and has broken up that information into traffic flows uh, and destinations. We also have information about the device itself, and in this case, we're going to take a look at the MAC address of this device. I'm going to go back into DNA Center uh, and do a search on that MAC address. You will now see that with that MAC address, we have AI Endpoint Analytics. And inside of Endpoint Analytics, we can actually get data about the device and trust score information about the devices. And this is done with profiling inside of uh, DNA Center. If we log into ICE, we can take a look at our uh, ADEPA network control policies. So this is the policies that were created in ICE, and then those policies were then imported into SNA and into DNA Center automatically using the PX grid. Uh, and ICE also keeps track of any device that has been placed into any of those ANC roles. So right now we have a, that, that device that we're looking at, that same MAC address. It is logged in as a regular user. We can go back into SNA and say we can change the ANC policy. And in this example, we'll quarantine it. Now this is being done manually, but again, we could do this with automatic remediation based on detections. Here you can see now in ICE in the live action logs that we are now quarantining that device. Uh, it's also in the endpoint assignment that the device is now quarantined. This is because SNA told ICE to quarantine the device. Also at the same time, now that that has been pushed, we also have that same information replicated inside of DNA Center, again, because of the ICE interaction, uh, both sides are being notified of the changes. While we're in DNA Center, we could even change the ANC policy within DNA Center. Uh, in this case, we're now set it to the re-off mode. If we go back into ICE, you'll see that the quarantine has rule has this been now changed from quarantine to a re-authentication. Uh, that also is reflected in the endpoint assignment here. If we go back into the SNA console and then look at the ICE ANC assignments, we have a log of what has been happening. So before we had uh, SNA was did a manual configuration of quarantine ANC. But then we have pulled ICE again. We see that we're now in the re-off mode. And then here's another example of us changing it now to the unquarantined mode. At the same time as that is done, we can go back into DNA Center and look at the same exact device again. And notice that again, now that score has been cleared. So we're now in the unquarantined or regular mode. Uh, and that is reflected in all three locations, both SNA, in DNA Center, and in ICE. And with this, this concludes our demonstration. Now, as you can see, we can use DNA Center and Cisco Secure Network Analytics to automate malware detection and mitigation.